What up, this is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Beast. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, ring that bell, so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. Let's rock this. For those of us who are old enough to remember, there was this movie 25 years ago called The Ghosts and the Darkness, starring Michael Douglas and Val Kilmer. The film didn't do so well at the box office, but as an impressionable kid growing up in the 90s, I saw it at the time and thought that it was a really cool thriller about lions that didn't involve Hakuna Matata or any of that soft shit. So back when I first saw the trailer for Beast, I was like, Hell yes, finally, another man versus lion movie. Been a long time coming. Well, to be fair, Megan Fox had that rogue a couple of years ago, but that one was so cheesy, I don't even want to think about it anymore. But yeah, B, survival thriller, made by the same director of Contraband, Two Guns and Everest. I'm like, okay, count me in to watch this one. And now that I've seen the whole thing, eh, I gotta be honest with you. Beast is just okay. It's okay. It has its moments, but I think some of its problems is, is that it has several cuts in between the suspense that were designed out of convenience, just so they can go to the next set piece, even though the transition makes no sense at all. Written by Ryan Engel and directed by Baltasar Kormakur, in Beast, Idris Elba plays Dr. Nate Daniels, a recently widowed husband who returns to South Africa where he first met his wife on a long planned trip with their daughters to a game reserve managed by Martin Battles, an old family friend and wildlife biologist. But what begins as a journey of healing jolts into a fearsome fight for survival when a lion, a survivor of bloodthirsty poachers who now sees all humans as the enemy, begins stalking them co-starring Charlotte Copley, Yana Halley, and Leah Saif Jeffries. Okay, let's get right to the CG lion. We all understand why it has to be done this way. Putting aside animal rights activist potential outrage, let's face it, working with CG animals is just more practical, as opposed to how things were back then, in the days of Val Kilmer. Nowadays, you can computerly mimic the behaviors of a real lion without putting your safety at risk. And you can better control the environment or the choreographies to stage or to shoot some of the more intense scenes. So in my opinion, the CG lion in Beast gets a passing grade. It looks believable. It looks convincing. It looks scary. The technologies have definitely caught up. Now, the idea of a lion going on a vengeful rampage is a bit much, but then again, Lions intentionally attacking and killing railway workers in the 1800s did happen. So you gotta cut the screenwriter's imagination some slack here. And obviously it has an anti-poaching agenda which is gonna sit well with audiences. The cinematography is solid in my book. The scenes in which the lion keeps terrorizing the car are absolutely terrifying because of how dynamic the camera moves. And I'm glad that the lion's relentlessness is something that the film emphasizes. Now, the father-daughter storyline is sufficient enough to provide some emotional underpinning so that the characters have something to lose so that there's room for heroic moments. And even though Idris Elba and Charlotte Copley are the big stars here, but it's the girls who play Idris's daughters that leave the biggest mark. Look. All in all, Beast is not terrible, but it's not mind-blowing either. And a lot of it takes a page out of the Jurassic Park playbook. And as I said earlier, some of the transitions are awfully convenient. But would I file this under a popcorn Saturday night movie? Yes, yes I would. So if you go into watching Beast with that mentality or that mindset, then you'll be just fine.